has made. She's a queen. This is dedicated to all my beautiful queens, all my beautiful ladies out there. She's a queen. Go queen. You got it, girl. She's a queen. You better represent. Go queen. Go queen. Go. She's a queen about her business. Queen. Working hard on a mission. You guys for joining another another episode of the Key Chat Podcast. So today I have a very special guest. His name is Mr. Brandon Robinson, and he's an author and a poet. And his new book is entitled "When Words Won't Form, My Pen Speaks." So I want to go ahead and give him the floor. He's an advocate for emotional healing. So I want to go ahead and give him the floor so he can tell us about his great platform. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? It's such a pleasure to you know um, finally be able to connect. I know we followed each other on social media. Uh, we commented on each other's posts. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's great to, you know, finally get a chance to really right. and have We're a good conversation social on. We're media friends. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, and really in COVID, that's that's usually how it goes. Okay. Now I got lighting. Okay. Nice, nice. Pretty much. So I know, like, you have a similar platform. You know, you talk about healing. You talk about mental health, trauma. I love also how you talk about corporate stress, which is extremely traumatic, you know. So with your book, so let's start with your book. Just tell us, break it down to us, you know, what made you write it, what it's about, what's your goal with it. So let's talk about the book. Yeah, cool. So I actually, you know what? I forgot I said I was going to have a copy of it. I actually got to grab it. So I will grab it. Um, so okay. if you see me walk away, that's actually, <laughs> hold on. Let me walk away. It's just, it's no problem. All right. Sorry. I forgot I was supposed to grab it. So. Okay. Oh, yeah, sell that book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm actually, so I'm at my mom's house and she is like my number one seller, right? Um, As far as the book. But yeah, so what really made me write the book um, was that I really love sharing poetry, mm -hmm. uh, but I, and I really use uh, poetry and writing as an element of, of healing, right? And self-expression, first of all, self-expression, right? Like a way to really dive into being vulnerable uh, and, and really process what I was feeling, right? Like, because as we know in society, um, there are not a lot of safe spaces for men to really unpack emotional trauma, uh, things of that nature. So you end up bottling it up, kind of carrying it, you know, around for, you know, for the majority of your life and not really getting that safe space to really discuss those things. So for me, writing was that safe space. Um, and so that happened to be through poetry, right? So I started to write. And I said, wow, I can actually, like, I can make some rhymes. But then I kept writing. I said, oh, dude, I got something here. So I started to share, you know, with people. Um, it built off of that. And then I it built up to the point where I started writing to help other people. Um, and people kept saying, you should put you should put this in a book. It would really help people. And I was reluctant at first. I'm like, no. But then, you know, as I got more comfortable with people seeing me, uh, being more vulnerable, I decided to just go down the journey of writing a book. And so that's what made me do it. I wanted to help people. I wanted them to heal. I wanted them to feel better about themselves. I didn't want them to have to live, you know, behind emotional walls. So I wanted to help them tear those down. Um, and embrace the amazing parts of yourself that are behind it all. Wow, that's a powerful testimony. So did you have any fear writing it? Because I know you said initially you didn't have any intention, you know, of putting it in a book. And I think sometimes we sit on a lot of talents, you know, not realizing where we can go with those talents. So how long did it take you to write? Like once you really <laughs> advance yourself, you know, yeah, I can really do this. How long was that process? So first of all, it took my it took me about three years to convince myself to do it. <laughs> Ooh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So I think 2018 is when I really around 2018 is when I was like, oh, I should do it. And I'm like, ah, you know, I'll do it at the end of the year. 2019, ah, I'll do it at the end of the year. Then 2020 came and basically the whole world shut down. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna start. And so that's what made me start the process and I did it. But yeah, I definitely had to offer. I mean, there's actually a poem about it. So there so do you ever, I don't know about you, but sometimes at night, like, 
you know, I'm looking to scrolling through IG or Facebook and you see like memes, like motivational, inspirational memes. And so I happened to be like reading one of the memes and it was like self-sabotage looks a lot like this. And it had like three things. It was like procrastination, want to let you do something and something else. And I'm like, oh my God, like I'm self-sabotaging. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what made me like, so thinking about that, I'm like, I have to finish things. That was one of the things, finish things. But, and it was like, oh, self-sabotage also, being hard on yourself, a couple other things. But seeing that, I was like, you know what? This is why I'm not writing the book, because I'm sabotaging myself. Mm. That, so, that self, was, do you think, and self-sabotage to me is like a form of imposter syndrome, basically. It kind of goes hand in hand, you know, like we talk ourselves out of stuff. And fear, I always say, like, fear is natural. You know, I know I think a lot of times we don't want to admit that we're scared to do something, but I think it is true. If something really, I think it's natural to have some fear and even healthy in a sense to have fear before you accomplish something big, as long as you don't sit in it, you know? Yeah, you, know? Yeah, I, <laughs> right. yeah, you do. I think, I think there's a degree of anticipation. Mm-hmm. You have, you're nervous, you're anticipating. Um, there's the unknown, so there's the fear of the unknown too, right? Like you got that fear of failure too, right? I mean, case in point, I just did, and you saw the video I did with the news station. Mm-hmm. So before that, the night before, hey, look, I was straight freaking out, like, oh God, this is real. <laughs> like, I'm about to like tell like the whole world everything. I'm like, uh, um, can I do this? Pretty much. And I had to have a heart to heart moment with myself and, and God too. And I'm like, here's where I am. Here's how I feel, but I, I work through it. And you know what I use? I wrote. Like I literally wrote mm-hmm. something out. Like I wrote a poem, and that's I, that's how I deal with stuff. Like when it's really difficult, I write. Do you find writing to be like a form of therapy for you? Absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. There's there's nothing that I can't express in my heart. You know, if I have a pen and paper, I can right. say anything. Like I can't always say it like you know <laughs> in words. Like I. I'm a great communicator now, but with writing, there, there's no filter. There's no judgment. There's no reservations. It's just like, here's where I am. Here's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's such space for me. That's good. That's great. So with the book, what's your goal? Like, I mean, obviously, like you said, you like to focus on healing and trauma and things like that. And just with your posts, you know, because I would say I follow you on IG, just with your posts, you know, they're always centered towards motivating people and also I think asking for transparency you know too so with the book what's your hope and what you want people to really grasp from the book yeah so when someone picks up the book I want them a to so there's a guide that comes with the book um there's a vulnerability guide um, Mm -hmm. that people should read before they even read the book just read the vulnerability guide um it comes to ebook but what I want people to come away with is I want them to embrace vulnerability. It doesn't work, and we don't grow if we're not vulnerable, first off, with ourselves, right? Um, before we're vulnerable with anybody else, before we're open with anybody else, we have to be vulnerable and allow ourselves to see, oh, this is how I feel about this. This is how I'm thinking about this, like, for ourselves. So I want them to embrace that, you know, uh, to embrace that vulnerability. And then... As you embrace that vulnerability, that will enable you to tear down those walls emotionally, right? Things that we build to protect ourselves because, you know, we experience traumatic things. Like, that happens a lot. And the response is, let me put a wall up because there's pain and hurt here. Um, and so, and I'm not saying that's wrong. That's the best thing we know to do. And yeah. So, as we heal, like, as we embrace vulnerability, we can work on healing what's behind those walls because now we can begin to unpack those things. So as we do that, then we can tear down those walls, heal, and then we can embrace the amazing parts of ourselves. And then the world gets to see these amazing parts of us that were behind them, behind the wall. Like that's what I want people to walk away. Mm-hmm. I think too, like you mentioned, when we've been hurt or we're dealing with past trauma, it's natural to it's treated like, you know, let's say you you scrape yourself, the body itself is gonna heal it, then it's gonna scab, you know, it may leave a scar. But that's just a natural human response. Like once you've been hurt, you've gone through trauma, you, you're you going to build a wall. Whether it's effective, you know, that's, that's 
I guess it depends on the person because that's the only, I guess that's the only unfair exchange. You put up the walls, you could possibly block out some blessings, you know, in the form of people or things, you know, because you're afraid to be hurt, but you put up the same walls, you also repel some things that really could negatively harm you. I think that's the torture that happens though once you've gone through trauma, your brain is always working overtime trying to figure out, okay, is this person gonna hurt me? Or yeah. are they not gonna hurt me? And then sometimes it's before they even get an opportunity, you know, to hurt or help, you know, automatically, you know, your brain's automatically working, your heart's automatically working overtime, like, wait a minute, let me see if I can catch, you know, some some hidden Um, some hidden, you know, flags or signals so I can save myself some trauma. You know, that's the heavy, heavy, heavy part about and that's, and from experience, you know, it's really heavy. Yeah. So what, what, and what's your take on that? Uh, so there are a few things that made me think that when I thought about or hearing you say that is, what happens, what comes out of that is a few things. That it, it is natural to defend and protect yourself. It's not bad. Like you said, like even when we have a scar on our body, like if I cut my hand, there's gonna be a scar to cover that, that hurt area while it's healing. So it's not necessarily bad that we like don't present those areas that are wounded to people while we're in the process of healing. The problem is when there's not prolonged state of hurt, when we're in that prolonged state of trauma, and we're not actively working on that, that's when, you, that's when you say like, hey, you can really miss out on, like you said, your blessings and things like that. Because yes, I'm staying safe behind this wall, but I'm also keeping things out. Like I'm keeping love out. I'm keeping the love of God out. I'm keeping um, the love that people can have. Uh, and, you know, and our desire to connect with people. Well, now I'm doing that, right? Um, and like when you said like, because I've done that, right? Like you... You have relationships, they fail, whether it's friendship, family, whatever, like you, you can go through any place. You have those kind of relationships, quite naturally it fails. So now you're hurt, you grieve the loss of that relationship, you go through that process, but then if you stay in that place of broken trust, now you self-sabotage other relationships because it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy because you look for the worst in every relationship and it is so hard and you have to retrain and really work out like no I'm gonna believe the best no this is a new person no they're not like this other person who did x y and z mm -hmm. but that's you know it's it takes work you know healing healing is work and I think one of my posts I was like sometimes healing feels like it hurts more than the actual pain itself because you got to cover it, now you got to work through it, and then you got to try to heal through it and be different. So healing can be very challenging, um, and that's why, honestly, that's why a lot of people don't always do it. Yeah. Because it's right. more comfortable to keep that wall up. Right, and you're right. Healing is work, you know, and that's why I think sometimes people are comfortable in their mess, even when they know it's not working for them, because it takes work to get healthy. That's if you have a surgery, it's going to take work to heal. You know, there's a recovery process, especially if you've gone through trauma for a long period of time. It's not, you're not going to heal from it overnight. Like, that's just not, you know, it would be nice if you could, if you could purchase a little pill and boop. But it doesn't work that way. You know, even with therapy, you know, I took a pause one time because um, I was like last year, like, you know, I really want to go talk to a therapist. I was like, ah, I don't feel like starting this story over. <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, you have to tell them what's going on. You know, like I was telling someone the other day, it's not like, you know, the therapist is going to, like during the live, like the therapist is going to automatically know what happened to you 1987, you know, May the 14th. Like, it would be cool, <laughs> but you got to start from the beginning, you know, and there's going to be heavy moments, but. Is it worth it? Yeah, but you got to be prepared to. Sometimes therapy could kind of, not just therapy, but any form that's going to take for healing. You know, let's say you're dealing with an addiction. You have to go through rehabilitation, you know, so there's a lot to go through. And actually addiction is a good 
a good example. If someone has purged a bunch of things and put a bunch of things in their body for a long time, you can't just automatically decide tomorrow, hey, I'm not going to use it anymore. Your body's become accustomed to it. You have to go to rehabilitation, you know, and a lot of re um, and a lot of um, people who are, you know, recovering, they literally get physically sick, you know, not doing these toxic things. So same thing with emotional healing, you know, you're used to doing some toxic things, maybe, you know, just some negative things, bad habits, emotional bad habits. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. You're going to go through some issues, you know self-sabotaging it's hard to break that trend right because now i gotta trust people now i gotta like believe and see the good and it's like right. and then you gotta dig to why don't you see the good in people? like why don't mm-hmm. i know? then it's like god i gotta go to the root of stuff and it's like oh seeing the root of it it's like oh like you said imposter syndrome or honestly low self-esteem low self-worth now i gotta see that i just don't think that i'm worth this and that's sometimes it's difficult to look in that mirror and actually see that, like, oh, this is really why. This is this is at the root of what I'm really dealing with. And then, you know, that's that can be difficult, right? Because then you gotta you gotta give yourself grace when you see the weaknesses or limitations or effects of life in your own spirit. Right. And part of healing too is also acknowledging some things that we aren't right about within ourselves. And mm-hmm. it's putting the mirror up and acknowledging, okay. I can also be hard to deal with because of the trauma. You know what I'm saying? I I may have, you know, you can look at yourself and say, okay, I may have issues communicating, you know, and that's the thing too with healing. It's not always the world, you know, and that's, it takes a lot of work. So I know you also, like I said, you're an advocate for emotional healing, obviously, as we discussed. So let's break down some of your definitions. So what's your full definition of breaking down emotional walls, tearing them down? Sure. Um, so first of all, for everybody, it looks so differently because everyone's constructed a different way. So first of all, I think self-awareness, you mentioned, um, as being something that's important, but you have to be aware of yourself. So you gotta, you have to know you personally, right? How is this wall constructed? Um, so if you're talking about tearing it down, first of all, how was it built? Um, why was it built? Like you have to, so vulnerability as a, is at the heart of it because then you can have those honest self-discovery conversations with yourself, you know, whether that's with a therapist, whether that's with you, whether that's with a preacher, whether that's with a therapeutic friend or just by yourself, you know, along with your thoughts in the journal, uh, narrative therapy or, you know, however it is that that person arrives at that place. We all do, we all do that in so many different ways. But understanding, really discovering the root. I'm very big on why, you know, what's the root? Like if I'm looking at my, my, my behavior patterns, I like to understand beyond, I get I'm behaving like this, right? Like for instance, let's take fear. All right. Let's say I'm, I'm afraid, like we'll, we'll, so we'll dissect me. I was afraid to write the book. Okay. Why was I afraid? Was I afraid of failure? Was I afraid of success? Was I afraid of people seeing me? It was a little bit of all of the above. But then it's like, okay, let's go a little deeper. What, what was motivating that fear? And if we unpack all of that, we got to see like, oh, I just had to realize that what I was offering was good enough. Once I got that, I was good. Right then, fear went away. So fear wasn't my issue. Like fear was just a reaction to what something deeper was going on. And I think for people, a lot of times what we see isn't always the root cause of the problem. And it's understanding the root cause because a lot of times the manifestation of of our in our character or our behavior isn't always the real driver. So it's like it's looking beyond my actions to see okay, what's really going on. That is what I would say. People, you know, that's really tearing down walls because now you have to dig deep. Mm-hmm. Then when you dig deep, you'll find you most of the time, and that may take some time, you know, it's a process. It's not always overnight. Sometimes it is overnight. Sometimes it isn't. But in doing that, you get to see that, oh, I, I don't really even have this problem. Like, this is my problem, actually. Mm-hmm. And then you just work on fixing it. 
Wow, wow. So I know in addition to discussing emotional walls, you've also said that you feel that vulnerability is important. Can you please break that one down? Yeah, vulnerability is huge. I actually... So I did, I think, uh, and you may have saw it, I had a live last week with me and one of my really good friends who talked about vulnerability. So he like pushed me, like pushed me towards being even more open. Like, so with people who are close to me, I'm an open book. But when it came to everybody else, I'm like, yeah, that's okay. And so I had to do a lot of work with being comfortable with being more open and being more transparent. Because I realized that in order for me to help people embrace it, I had to actually practice and live it. And I had to be very transparent that at times it's hard, at times I feel uncomfortable, but it's really allowing myself to be more visible, to be whether that's good, bad, here's my emotions, here's my state, here's where I am. First of all, I have to allow myself to see that. Like I can't live in denial. So if I can do that with me, and if I'm practicing that with myself, and it's easier to practice. Um, some hidden, you know, flags or signals so I can save myself some trauma. You know, that's the heavy, heavy, heavy part about and that's, and I, from experience, you know, it's really heavy. Yeah, and that's what I can relate to. Yeah. So what, what, and what's your take on that? Uh, so there are a few things that made me think that when I thought about or hearing you say that is what happens, what comes out of that is a few things that it, it is natural to defend and protect yourself. It's not bad. Like you said, like even when we have a scar on our body, like if I cut my hand, there's going to be a scar to cover that, that hurt area while it's healing. So it's not necessarily bad that we like don't present those areas that are wounded to people while we're in a process of healing. The problem is when there's not prolonged state of hurt, when we're in that prolonged state of trauma, and we're not actively working on that. That's when you that's when you say like, hey, you can really miss out on like you said your blessings and things like that. Because yes, I'm staying safe behind this wall, but I'm also keeping things out. Like I'm keeping love out. I'm keeping the love of God out. I'm keeping um, the love that people can have, uh, and, you know, and our desire to connect with people. Well, now I'm doing that, right? Um, and like when you said, like, because I've done that, right? Like you you have relationships that fail, whether it's friendship, family, whatever, like you, you can go through any place. You have those kind of relationships, quite naturally it fails. So now you're hurt, you grieve the loss of that relationship, you go through that process, but then if you stay in that place of broken trust, now you self-sabotage other relationships because it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because you look for the worst in every relationship. And it is so hard and you have to retrain and really work that like, no, I'm going to believe the best. No, this is a new person. No, they are not like this other person who did X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, it's it takes work. You know, healing, healing is work. And I think one of my posts, I was like, sometimes healing feels like it hurts more than the actual pain itself because you got to cover it. Now you got to work through it and then you got to try to heal through it and be different. So healing can be very challenging. Um, and that's why, honestly, that's why a lot of people don't always do it. Yeah. Because it's right. more comfortable to keep that wall up. Right. And you're right. Healing is work, you know, and that's why I think sometimes people are comfortable in their mess, even when they know it's not working for them, because it takes work to get healthy. That's if you have a surgery, it's going to take work to heal. You know, there's a recovery process, especially if you've gone through trauma for a long period of time. It's not you're not going to heal from it overnight. Like that's just not, you know, it would be nice if you could, if you could purchase a little pill and boop. But it doesn't work that way. You know, even with therapy, you know, I took a pause one time because um, I was like last year, like, you know, I really want to go talk to a therapist. And I was like, ah, I don't feel like starting this story over. <laughs> you know, because like, I mean, you have to tell them what's going on. You know, like I was telling someone the other day, it's not like, you know, the therapist is going to, like during the live, I'm like the therapist is going to automatically know what happened to you in 1987, you know, May the 14th, like, 
it would be cool, but you got to start from the beginning, you know, and there's going to be heavy moments, but is it worth it? Yeah, but you got to be prepared to. Sometimes therapy could kind of, not just therapy, but any form that's going to take for healing, you know, let's say you're dealing with an addiction, you have to go through rehabilitation, you know, so there's a lot to go through. And actually addiction is a good a good example. If someone has purged a bunch of things and they put a bunch of things in their body for a long time, you can't just automatically decide tomorrow, hey, I'm not going to use it anymore. Your body's become accustomed to it. You have to go to rehabilitation, you know, and a lot of re um, and a lot of um, people who are, you know, recovering, they literally get physically sick, That's you know, cool. not doing these toxic things. So same thing with emotional healing, you know, if you're used to doing some toxic things, maybe, you know, just some negative things, bad habits, emotional bad habits. Yeah. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. You're going to go through some issues. Right. You like, know? It's self-sabotaging. It's hard to break that trend, right? Because now I got to trust people. Now I got to, like, believe and see the good. And it's like, right. and then you got to dig to why don't you see the good? Like, why don't mm -hmm. I? Know? Then it's like, God, I got to go to the root of stuff. And it's like, oh. Seeing the root of it, it's like, oh, like you said, imposter syndrome or honestly low self-esteem, low self-worth. Now I got to see that. I just don't think that I'm worth this. And that's sometimes it's difficult to look in that mirror and actually see that. Like, oh, this is really why. This is this is at the root of what I'm really dealing with. And, it, you know, that's that can be difficult, right? Because then you got to got to give yourself grace when you see the weaknesses or limitations or effects of life in your own spirit. Right. And part of healing, too, is also acknowledging some things that we aren't right about within ourselves. And mm -hmm. it's putting the mirror up and acknowledging, OK, I can also be hard to deal with because of the trauma. You know what I'm saying? I, I may have, you know, you can look at yourself and say, OK, I may have issues communicating. You know, and that's the thing, too, with healing. It's not always the world. you know, <laughs> And that's it takes a lot of work. So I know you also, like I said, you're an advocate for emotional healing, obviously, as we discussed. So let's break down some of your definitions. So what's your full definition of breaking down emotional walls, tearing them down? Sure. Um, so first of all, for everybody, it looks so differently because everyone's constructed a different way. So first of all, I think self-awareness, you mentioned, um, as being something that's important, but you have to be aware of yourself so you gotta you have to know you personally right how is this wall constructed um so if you're talking about tearing it down first of all how was it built um why was it built like you have to so vulnerability as a is at the heart of it because then you can have those honest self-discovery conversations with yourself you know whether that's with a therapist whether that's with you whether that's with a preacher whether that's with a therapeutic friend or just by yourself you know along with your thoughts in the journal uh, narrative therapy or, you know, however it is that that person arrived at that place. We all do, we all do that in so many different ways. But understanding, really discovering the root. I'm very big on why, you know, what's the root? Like if I'm looking at my, my, my behavior patterns, I like to understand beyond, I get I'm behaving like this, right? Like for instance, let's take fear. All right, let's say I'm, I'm afraid, like we'll, we'll, so we'll dissect me. I was afraid to write the book. Okay, why was I afraid? Was I afraid of failure? Was I afraid of success? Was I afraid of people seeing me? It was a little bit of all of the above. But then it's like, okay, let's go a little deeper. What, what was motivating that fear? And if we unpack all of that, we got to see like, oh, I just had to realize that what I was offering was good enough. Once I got that, I was good. Right then, the fear went away. So fear wasn't my issue. Like fear was just a reaction to what something deeper was going on. And I think for people, a lot of times, what we see isn't always the root cause of the problem. And it's understanding the root cause because a lot of times, the manifestation of of our in our character or our behavior isn't always the real driver. So it's like it's looking beyond my actions to see, okay, what's really going on. That is what I would say. People, you know, that's really tearing down walls because now you have to dig deep. Mm -hmm. Then when you dig deep, you'll find you most of the time, and that may take some time, 
You know, it's a process. It's not always overnight. Sometimes it is overnight. Sometimes it isn't. But in doing that, you get to see that, oh, I, I don't really even have this problem. Like, this is my problem, actually. Mm-hmm. And then you just work on fixing it. Wow, wow. So I know in addition to discussing emotional walls, you've also said that you feel that vulnerability is important. Can you please break that one down? Yeah, vulnerability is huge. I actually, so I did, I think, uh, and you may have saw it, I had a live last week with me and one of my really good friends who talked about vulnerability. So he like pushed me, like pushed me towards being even more open. Like, so with people who are, Close to me, I'm an open book. But when it came to everybody else, I'm like, that's yeah, okay. And so I had to do a lot of work with being comfortable with being more open and being more transparent because I realized that in order for me to help people embrace it, I had to actually practice and live it. And I had to be very transparent that at times it's hard, at times I feel uncomfortable, but it's really allowing myself to be more visible to be whether that's good, bad, here's my emotions, here's my state, here's where I am. First of all, I have to allow myself to see that. Like, I can't live in denial. So if I can do that with me, and if I'm practicing that with myself, then it's easier to practice. To, to watch with flaws all day long. This is a life of someone who's been abused and rejected. And the feeling and the feeling of blame is how they're affected. Internalizing how you really feel, praying that from your heart all this anger won't spill. To walk around wondering what I did to deserve a life like this. But on the outside present like all is bliss. Silent battles, the ones that that don't even invoke a tear. Because behind the hidden because because of being hidden in the ball behind fear. The agony and the depth of pain in your soul, it's like living life without an ounce of control. Day to day, you are trying to survive. Passion and constant anger reminding you that you are alive. So how do we break free from the grips when we feel like we have the strength of a baby's fingertips? The first thing you do is rest in my arms. I will reassure you that I will protect you from lifetimes. The longer you are here, you will be convinced that I care. No matter what you face, I'll always be there. That's God's voice. So if you suffer suffer from the pain of abuse, let God's love set you loose. You don't have to walk around feeling like you're always to blame. You can always, you can have the innocence and protection in his name. So it was either that one or abuse itself. That one is Which, good too. Can you, we have time. If you have time, do you mind reading that one too? Okay, yeah, so this is the one on abuse. And I think it may have been this one. Mm-hmm. All right, abuse. It says, you extend your hand and I shrink back. In your mind, you wonder, why is that? You see me on the outside and I seem okay. But the scars I carry are hidden away. When you think of abuse, you think of something, you think of someone putting their hands on a loved one or a spouse. But abuse isn't always something you can see, like carbon monoxide in a house. Words don't, words don't leave an outward mark. But on my soul, the bruise is just as dark. The yelling, the screaming, they're like bombs that drop. That's how the attitude feels when you're just waiting for them to pop. Walking on eggshells is an underexpression of what you have to do. Meanwhile, the person is steady mistreating you. All the while, you just want them to treat you good, like any normal person would. It's almost a prison in your mind because you live in constant terror, wondering, what, you're wondering what, uh, what's next to beware of. So when you see me and I seem a little nervous around you, this is what abused people do. We tend to apologize because we fear the wrath. To some, it may not make sense, but you didn't walk in our path. I'm trying to come out of my shell, but the last time I tried, it didn't go so well. If I don't seem so sure, please don't judge me. Give me scars removed as ugly. Mm, that's it. That was the one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That. Thank you so much for sharing that. Before we wrap things up, though, can you 
just say something to the Q Chat community, the Q Chat Queen community, whatever you want to call it. Right now, I just feel like we live in a time where I feel like just mental health, you know, healing, therapy, it seems like it is talked about more often. Now, mind you, it still has some stigmas involved. But I do feel people are talking about it more often. You know, like I said, you cover a lot. Like you even talk about, you know, the corporate stress, which I think that's a whole separate episode in itself. I think like we could probably talk about that for hours, you know, Mm -hmm. but that's a part of healthy, a healthy mindset, because I think a lot of times we don't realize even our jobs aren't supposed to weigh us down emotionally. But I think a lot of times we have this perception of what's okay and what's not okay. And we really do think that even our jobs are like stress at the job or, you know, having headaches and being so annoyed with your job. That's supposed to be normal. You're not supposed to be like weighed down and unhappy with your job, your relationship, your family, any of those things. You know, I mean, I know you talk about that too, just things that can happen in our families, you know, so many elements you know, right now that can really weigh somebody down and you're really trapped in a toxic situation that's abusing you mentally and emotionally. And sometimes people aren't aware. What would you say to someone just, what are some of the red flags, I guess, a person could recognize that I feel would be similar across the board, whether it's in a relationship, your work, maybe a friendship because sometimes some of us are tied in friendships we shouldn't be in whether it's a job that's unhealthy what would you say are some red flags that are across the board that should tell a person hey this isn't serving you this is unhealthy you should move on what would you say so that's a good question Uh, it's it's a very it's it's a lot to tackle so i'm going to try to try to hit something that I think is very common. I think that as we grow in loving ourselves and valuing ourselves, we properly position ourselves, right? We have standards, et cetera. So what happens is whether it's a relationship or job or any of those things, if you walk away and you feel frustrated consistently, you need to examine why, um, why am I always frustrated from being in someone's presence? Or for instance, in a relationship, if people are are not respecting and honoring you for who you are, that's you can take that same part to a job. They're not respecting your talents. They're not respecting your voice, your value, your input. That's cross platform. That's a big sign for you know. Honestly, that's a form of abuse. Abuse at its simplest form is just mistreatment. So if people are mistreating and mishandling you uh, consistently, not not from their own character flaws and things that aren't really meant to be um, impacted on you, but that's just who they are towards you. It's consistent. You, you remind them, right? Like you talk to management about it and you talk to your friend, you talk to your relationship and they still keep consistently doing it. That's a very clear sign that it's not a healthy place for you to be, right? And that's some place that you don't need to be because you've only ha- you only have a few options. You can respond in a, in a very angry way you can internalize it and shut down emotionally, right? And just really internalize it, be angry with yourself and take it out on yourself, what's really meant for other people, um, or you can leave. Mm. Those are really the options. Right, right, definitely. So rounding everything out, what would you want to say? How do you, I normally end things with how you define a queen. I'm trying to stray away from that actually because I just feel like the topics are getting more broader you know and i just want to just i just want to give different messages so instead of how do you define a queen how let's do something different so how would you define true emotional healing for the chat community so give just give somebody some pointers on because you just mentioned red flags on hey this is the time to walk away but how would you define the true definition of the true emotional healing? You know, so if someone was watching this episode, they may be going through some of the things that we pointed out and they're not really sure how to get to that next stage. They've acknowledged, hey, these are some things in my life that are frustrating me, as you said. I don't know how to deal with this. 
what would you say? How do you define getting to that stage of a, of freeness, freedom, and emotional healing? Yeah. Um, so, in order to get to the end result, first of all, the end result is very different for everybody. So, first of all, I would encourage everybody not to compare yourself, your progress, um, or whatever phase you're in with someone else. Uh, we we were all different. We were all we all had different upbringings. We have emotional makeups that are different. So you can't compare. And, you can't do a compare and contrast of where you are to someone else because it's going to look very different because your personality is different. So that's the first place. Don't do comparison. Right? Comparison is a thief of um, self acceptance. Right? It'll rob you from that. That's the first thing. Second thing is once you started to. Um, you're not doing that and you're working through things. Once you're honest, um, I'm gonna plug myself. So once you're honest, I got a journal and a pen. So if you get a if you take a pen and a journal and you start to write those things out and get first of all, if you can get those things out on paper, um, that's the first release. Sometimes we need to release the release because a lot of times if people are honest. You kind of know the answer to a lot of things that you face. Not everything. Some things we don't know. But a lot of things we know what to do. But it's just, man, I'm carrying this, right? Um, so give yourself patience. Give yourself grace. Work through it. That looks very different if it's grief. Allow yourself to grieve. Allow yourself to grieve the end of relationship. Allow yourself to grieve a career move that didn't work out. Allow yourself to grieve, you know, friendships ending. These are things that we usually label as depression. And that's not depression, that's grief. We grieve the loss of things. You have the loss of things. You had a best friend and your relationship ends, you're going to naturally grieve that. That's not bad. But a lot of times, anger and hurt say, I, I don't care about them. I'm not going to let myself. No, you, that was your, that was your role, dog. Like, it hurt. Like, that was your man. It's like, dang, that was my person. Like, all right, that hurt. Like, give yourself the time to go through the phases of grief and process that so that you can forgive them. Forgiveness isn't for them. It's for you. Like, that's so you don't have to walk around upset or bitter or, you know, holding on to those experiences. You forgive me for you, not for them, for you. So mm -hmm. that allows you to forgive. And as you can work through that process, then you can you can start to see, like, you know, when people bring up, like, so a person that's being married and that's mm -hmm. not married, when people bring up your ex, I, how do you respond? Like, are you are you bitter? I used to be, right? So people just bring my ex, I'm like, Arr! like, eh. <laughs> Nah, it's like, you know, hey, look, hey, I hope she's living her life. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm not with her. You know, do her thing. Like, hey, we went our separate ways, you know. God bless to her. God bless to me. Right. But it's time for me to get there. It's healing for me. To get, I'm, I'm pretty sure I still got a way to go in some areas. But yeah. when things are presented to you, you can kind of tell where you are in that, in that phase, right? you know you're healed when you put in certain situations and you respond to them. Mm, mm, that's, mm. that's how you know for yourself. Now, other people going to see it, but you know, you're like, hey, I can go off. Like, I did good. Like, hey, I didn't, you know, I didn't go off on them. Usually, you know, like, say if somebody hit one of your triggers, like, we got triggers. Some of We all got a trigger, right? Mm. How you find when somebody hit your trigger? Do you snap? Like, hey, I don't know who you think. Like, Or you like, you know what? They don't know about my trigger. They didn't, they weren't raising me. They didn't go through these experiences. Here's an opportunity for me to build this relationship and force to have a more intimate bond. Let me explain why this is difficult and why here's a boundary and why I have it. That's going to strengthen our relationship. When you're doing that consistently, you've matured and you've healed. Mm -hmm. Wow, you just said a word. <laughs> Literally. I know one part of my healing I noticed when I didn't respond to certain things at all that I would have normally had my da 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 da. It got to the point where I was just like, okay, it's like I don't care what, you know, so and so thinks, you know, like this isn't worth a response. When I got to that point in my life, I was like, it was like a, the part of the movie where like the clouds clear and stuff, you know, because I was like, wow, I don't even have that energy 
to respond to these situations of people anymore. And that's when I knew I had truly changed. And like you said, we all go through stuff. You know, we, we I like I said, I say this all the time. I've said it on the show a billion times. I'm always going to be a state of, in a state of ING. I'm always going to be growing, learning, building. You know what I'm saying? Like, because we always can get better, but we can always get better better than better than the past you know and that's a good stage so before we end everything please make sure you tell everyone where they can find your information this has been a very informative chat i really think people are going to listen to this one and pick up some things you know to help them be free really because healing is a huge process but healing is necessary you know and we all deserve it so i really think that they're going to listen to this one and be like you know and it's okay to own your feelings too you know, so I think they'll definitely get something from this. So tell everyone where they can find you on IG. Like I said, I love your IG and definitely plug that book one more time. <laughs> All right. So here's a book, When Words Won't Form, My Pen Speaks, uh, Using the Power of the Pen to Tear Down Emotional Walls. So you can get the book. I got a, a book, a journal, and a pen set, or you can just get the book at uh, my website, which is www.winwords. Uh, no, I'm sorry, wordswonform.com. And it's Words won't form.com. Now, my IG is the same thing, it's just words won't form, right? Um, you'll find me on IG. And like you said, um, I my daily thing is to try to help people. I want to mm. build people up. I want to make their lives better. I want to be somebody that has an impact on the world to cause people to embrace vulnerability, to help people heal, to help people love themselves. Um, the one thing I did need to get a good to, to tackle was how I want to help men embrace vulnerability so that we can look at masculinity different, right? And that's a, that's a whole that's a whole podcast in itself, right? That's a whole show. Yeah. Um, but I just want people to see themselves um, as amazing people that they really are. And I'm definitely gonna have to have you back. We're, we need to do a live follow up because I feel like the corporate. The things you say about working in corporate America, that's a separate show. <laughs> the the masculinity of that's another show. So like we just began like literally two more episodes. So we can make that happen. <laughs> I've got the whole corporate, like their stories. I know you got them and I got oh, yeah. them. in corporate America. So I'm doing this and I'm in corporate America. Here's the thing though, I'm in cybersecurity, so I'm in tech. Right. So I'm the only a lot of times I've been the only black person and not only just in my department, in the country for the stuff I cover. So it's you talking about being an Obama mm. or a, and a trauma that comes with like all of the statements and hey, the the mistakes, the racist jokes, yeah. correct folks, like, hey bro, I don't do fried chicken jokes. Like that's not funny. Like, right. Or white people talking to you like like you're black, like they talk to everybody like this, and then they go to you like, "Hey, bro, what's up, dog?" I'm like, like, have I ever talked to you like that? Like ever? Like, yeah. So that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother. Yeah. It really is. It's like it's nails down a chalkboard. Even now, you know, like I said, I've been out of that world for almost three years, if I'm doing the math right. Two or three years. Like I said, it's. It's a blur technically because it was such a terrible experience, and I would never. I personally hope I never have to go back. Like I, like that's a whole different. <laughs> that's another show and another book. <laughs> but thank you so much for just dropping this knowledge, and to everyone that tunes in, just definitely take these gems. Like, and I, I say this a lot too. You deserve the best, and part of the best is having emotional healing. You know, and like I said, we're always going to be in a state to ing you know what i'm saying like there's no perfect level to this stuff but the goal is to just be better than the past you know there's things that really are some triggers and we all have triggers you know we have triggers from bad relationships we have triggers from some hurt we may have experienced with our families we have some hurts that we experienced even on that job you know hurts with friendships it's okay to own those emotions. You know, just like Brandon said, you can grieve. It's okay. You know, as long as you focus on not staying in it. You know what I'm saying? Our emotions are valid. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad. But just don't sit in it. You know what I'm saying? And I think we live in a world, too, where we're told we got to be strong all the time, which leads to 
it's okay to be vulnerable. You don't have to, I tell people all the time, your crown can slip, just don't let it fall. It's okay to let it slip. You know, it's okay to not be okay. You know, like it's all a part of the journey, you know, but just understand that you deserve the best. You deserve to be free, but don't beat yourself up though. If let's say you don't respond the same way you used to in 09, but you know, something may still hurt you now, but it don't get you as bad as it used to. Still give yourself a gold star because you're getting better. You're healing. As long as you keep working towards the healing, I promise you things will get better. So thank you guys again for joining the Key Chat Podcast. Thank you, Brandon. We've definitely been trying to get this going for quite some time. So guys, make sure that you follow Brandon on IG. Like he does some great posts every day. He also does lives. And also guys, go ahead and check out some past episodes of the Q Chat and stay locked in. Go to www.thekeychat.com and make sure you guys be safe and go love yourself.